So, I got a question the other day. Oh, shizzle. Listen, I got an unironed shirt, but I'm in my I'm in my house, and um, I don't want to go iron it. So, it does bother me though. <laughs> the fact that it bothers me shows that it it's not something I do all the, all the time. Anyway, JW, she sent me a message, a comment on one, under my one of one of my videos that. It was a video about me answering questions about applied neuroscience MSc program at King's College. I'm going to read it quickly. She says, hi there, I rec I'm recently enrolled in the program, not neuroscience, but psychology and neuroscience of mental health. So same, same, I'm sure in terms of structure and layout with slight changes in content. My question to you is this, do you think you are perhaps a little jaded due to the fact that you were previously enrolled in a semi-competitive program going in person? I've done courses online and in person, and I know always online seems substandard quality, but actually it's the same. I took PSY 101 and PSY 102, both in person and online. She goes on to say, I've always found it's always more or less about what you take away from the learning as an individual. Of course, naturally you miss discussion in the group. If you're a discussions-based learner or need to see, then do. Maybe online in general is not for you and I can see a person easily getting disappointed. I'm personally more of a watch, pause, repeat, rephrase. I think, or I need to think on my own about what I've just learned. So environments online work best for that kind of personality. So first things first, Jay, thank you very much for your question. I very much appreciate these questions because it shows me what kind of content I need to make for my channel. Um, listen, I fully agree with you. It's all about what you take away from learning as an individual. Yes, it's true. But my answering of that question by those questions by Bernard were based on his particular reasons for wanting the degree. And um, my negative viewpoint of the fact that the, the degree is very expensive even though it costs sorry it costs the university less to pr provide that degree than it does for an actual in-person degree an in-person neuroscience degree at king's costs 13,500 an online applied neuroscience degree and the same degree that you do the master's degree that costs 18,000 so if I'm paying all this extra money, I need to have the exact same features as the in-person one, but they also need to be better. That's why I had a very negative viewpoint. Now, we are basically doing the same modules because you're doing psychology and neuroscience of mental health and I'm doing applied neuroscience, but for the first four modules, they're exactly the same. So I'm actually technically doing psychology and neuroscience of mental health because that's what the first four modules are called. But then when you move on to the next four, you get to choose applied neuroscience. And I only intend to do applied neuroscience, which is why I call it applied neuroscience on here. Um, so yes, at the moment, we're doing the very the exact same thing. So furthermore, Yes, I did do a semi-competitive in-person program at the University of Birmingham, but it wasn't for me. I'm actually more of an online person. Uh, but for me, my issue is this. Is the university providing a product that is superior to the in-person product? Now, I personally do like the ability to watch the lectures because I didn't, I didn't go to any lectures when I was in person. I didn't enjoy engineering. That was the major factor. But uh, having an online system back then would have helped me for sure. But today, so today having something like that is nice. However, not being able to go and find a lecturer when you have a problem or not being able to have someone actually, uh, sorry, not being able to have a neuroscientist actually check your essay as it is, is a problem. And it is something that the university needs to fix especially when they're charging eighteen thousand pounds so my answer to you about being jaded because or being negative basically about this particular degree is more my negativity comes at the fact that it's a an, a more expensive product but we're actually getting technically a, a reduced service now 
like you said, it's about what you take away as an individual. That's why I'm still doing it, because I'm taking the information away, but I'm not happy about these facts that we've discussed. Now, I'm going to illustrate this in a very interesting way that I hope can really help you to visualize exactly what my thought process is on, on, on this, if there are any other viewers that are still a bit confused as to my thinking. If I went to buy a car and that car came with, you know, all kinds of features, sat-nav features, let's say, and let's just say I said, I have a better sat-nav on my phone, so take the sat-nav out and I'll just use a phone stand. Now, I am getting more benefit out of it, for sure, but the car salesman, or the people making the car, are actually having to save, they're getting to save money. So if they were to then say, you know, here is a, a car without all the additional features, but you're paying more for that just because it's more convenient for you, I'm going to have a problem with that because that doesn't make any sense. I might as well just take their system and just make do with my sat-nav and place it somewhere else, find a way to do it. Um, and that's what the university is doing. They're saying, oh, this online system is a way more scalable business model for us. We can get so many more students in throughout the year. We can oversubscribe it if we really, really want. Uh, we're not going to have to pay the lecturers to do the lectures because they're all videos pre-recorded and reused every eight months in the, when the carousel comes back around. And because the modules can be done in any order, we can just churn out new students every module. So every module has students that are, have done three, four modules, maybe one module, and then students that are doing their first module. So it's a win-win for them. Not only are they making way more in terms of the amount of students, they're making way more per student because of the reduced cost. They're making even more because they're increasing the price and they're not providing this to the, to the student. And the student gets basically a reduced service, regardless of what kind of uh, way of working is better for you, whether you like the online system or the in-person system. You should get the same um, benefits that the university is getting. But they will tell you, you know, they're very left-wing and they're very socialist in, in one uh, on one hand because you know the young people want them to believe a certain thing but when it actually comes to money then they become very very uh businessy and i say well how convenient so that is where my negativity towards the course comes from i have major issues with that furthermore uh bernard was asking a very simple question in how many ects points does this degree provide which is something he needs for a european phd and they weren't answering his question and that that concerned me and it, it resonated with something that some issue that I had where I said or I asked when I got onto the course how many people were accepted because he was congratulating me and telling me you know you're one of 800 people 800 people applied and you got on and I was interested in knowing how many people were allowed on because if 700 people were allowed on then it's not that impressive if 100 people were allowed on then it is impressive but he would have told me if it was 100 and I wanted to know how many people I went up against and how many people I, I, I got. Um, and they were very, very um, secretive about that. He didn't tell me the answer. And he, when I followed up, he didn't tell me. Then I thought, let me ask the person when I start the university. She didn't know. And then she didn't um, have the answer when I followed up on it. And then with this guy, uh, Bernard, they say, oh, well, it's... They don't answer the ECTS points question. They just say, oh, well, it's accepted as a master's degree. He's asking a very specific question. And the fact that you're not answering it, even though you know what ECTS points are because you're a university and you know what these things are, these metrics, if you don't answer that exact question, then you have something to hide. So that was another reason why I was very negative about this. I'd be very careful with this uh, King's master's program because listen king's is a good university and the master's program is is quite good you will learn how to write but you'll be very limited in how far you can a, a, achieve for example my first essay i got 51 percent. it was my first ever academic essay i was very disappointed the second essay i utilized the online services um to look at my essay and yes there was some good service that was provided by one individual 
um, and she looked at my essay, but she didn't look at the whole thing because you only get 10 minutes with her. And so she only got a, a little while to look at one paragraph, but she really, really helped me in, in focusing my essay. But then I thought, let me arrange another one in a few days uh, just to make sure I'm, a, I'm in a better position and I can take this essay to the next level. That one wasn't even interested. She didn't want to even do the, finish the conversation. She was just like, and because she's not a neuroscientist, she doesn't, she can't read the thing. You have to explain what you're doing, explain your strategy. And she just said, yeah, yeah, sounds good, sounds good. Now for that essay, I got 62%. And so 62% I got from one person, like she guided me to get 62%. But that means that the second person, if they had put some more effort in or were able to understand the writing in front of them, they would also have been able to get me a few extra percentage points. Then the month afterwards, I got 64%. So for me, I'm finding it very difficult to get into the 70%, per, percent, 70, into the 70 plus range. And I don't really see any way that the university is going to help me to be able to do that. While sure, it's on me, the ability, the main reason why we're there is to be able to learn to write an argument and, and, and lay it out really nicely. And there's a limit to it when you're the person looking at your paper or, or your um, writing isn't a neuroscientist. And that's no disrespect to them. Like I said, there is some overlap, absolutely. But those little details that you need to get you to the next level, they, they lack that because they, they don't provide that service, the university, that is. Um, they don't provide a neuroscientist uh, for, for that. And I'll give you a prime example. In that 64% essay, the latest one, I was uh, writing about knockout ma mice and the neuroscience guy that actually marked it said, yeah, you need to describe what knockout mice are. But for me, I had to choose between that description and some other scientific explanation and description later. And I just picked one of the two. Now, someone who's from, say, finance or, or wherever, who knows how to write a paper, they're not going to know what a knockout mouse is and they're not going to know about the importance of actually describing that because I did describe it. I just thought that that was less important than something else. But having an actual neuroscientist there might actually help guide you through that process a lot better and you don't have to lose marks like that. That's my concern. So I do hope um, I do hope I've answered your concerns and please do keep liking. Well, watching, subscribing, liking, whatever, my videos. Thanks. Done.